we record these messages so that we can send them all over the world back to Basics Online Church. We're one of the pioneers in worldwide ministry using the Internet and the cell phone. And God uh, told me to um, do the online church and to pioneer. I joined many other pioneers, Paul Bakley, Delford Davis, Mark Moyer up in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Mark is one of my mentees. And I mentored him in the online church, and he's doing very well. And there are many others. By the way, I just want to let you know we have our new book. You might want to order a copy to see what this church, this online church is doing. My new book is called The Online Church and the Great Commission. The Online Church and the Great Commission. And uh, just hot off the press. Just received copies from the publisher this, this week. Praise God. And so this book sells for $30, for $30. That includes our, our shipping and handling. And in this book, we have the introduction written by Pastor Paul Begley. Pastor Paul wrote the introduction, and we use his church as a model. We use Bishop Davis in Jamaica as a model and our own online church. And uh, thank God for, for you uh, some of your testimonies are in this book. Some of your testimonies are in this book. And so we want you to help us to announce this book to the people. Uh, we give a, a reason why the online church exists, reason why what the online church does. We are not competing with the brick-and-mortar church. This book makes, makes it specifically clear that there is one body of Christ. And uh, whether you're in a brick-and-mortar worship setting or an online setting, we work together. Hey, we let it be known that we work together and we come against the devil in the name of Jesus. We come unified and we talk about why it is important that the online church be in existence. We talk about the need for a church that will reach the people who have dropped out, people who have fallen away, people who are sick and afflicted and cannot get out to uh, uh, their regular place of attendance. And uh, this uh, online church is a great outreach to the world. So get your copy. You'll be blessed. You'll be so glad uh, that you got this. And um, help us to spread the word. I thank God for this book. It's, uh, I guess this is book number pretty close to 20 books I've written uh, since 1982. And so God has blessed me. He, he continues to churn out books, and I just praise him for what he's doing. And you have books inside of you, too. You've got messages inside of you. And so we greet you. I want to greet you, Jackie Fisher in Kentucky. I want to greet you, Christy Carpenter and the Carpenter family up in Idaho. I want to greet uh, Jeep Girl, Terry, in uh, Colorado. I want to greet uh, each and every one of you. I want to extend a greeting to those of you who are listening to the recording, or as Jackie Fisher and I, we call it the tape, listening to the tape. That's old school, Jackie, the tape. We used to call them tapes back in the 70s and 80s, and they're now called recordings. But uh, I, I still refer to tapes. I laugh because Jackie Fisher and I were talking the other day, and we mentioned listening to the tapes. So whether you're listening to the tape or the recording, we greet you. And we pray that this ministry will bless you. I want to greet all of you who watch uh, this ministry via our YouTube channel. Praise God. You are very important to us. God is getting this word out to multitudes of people uh, live or uh, via email or the YouTube channel or via our website, www.backtobasicsministries.wordpress.com. God is reaching a lot of people. We give a shout out to Elijah and all of our friends in Kenya. I saw you online today, Elijah, as you were leading the people. And then you were teaching for one of my books, Black Heroes of the Bible. And many of the saints there witness that they're getting blessings just in studying that book. And so we just praise God for what God is doing. Thank God for David Carter in uh, Dubai and the great work he and his wife Nyoka are doing in Dubai and so we praise God I stand with you all and and and, and love you and support you and what you're doing as you go about your daily uh, 
daily our lives worshiping the Lord and spreading the gospel. Praise God. The Holy Spirit lays on my heart that you're not to be weary in well-doing. Don't get weary in well-doing. Hey, Wes, don't get weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall be not. By the way, I want to pray for my son, Wes. He starts a new job this week. He's been teaching in Chester, Pennsylvania for 25 years, and now he's uh, uh, um, going to be teaching in New Jersey. So we're praying for you as you start a new career in the state of New Jersey. We're praying for you and your family. Praise God. We got your back, brother. We got your back in the name of Jesus. And we bless God. Okay, we're going to ask our friend Ryan Trogler to come on. Ryan's up in Marysville, Pennsylvania. He's one of our prayer warriors. I want to ask Ryan if he would lead us in prayer as we prepare to hear a mighty word from the Lord that's going to change people's lives and touch their hearts. Ryan, can you come on and pray for us at this time? Uh, yes, Pastor Carter, here I am. <laughs> uh, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for making another day because you made it. Uh, we want to thank you for this online ministry and blessing all the people that, that wants to come to hear your word. Uh, we want you to bless uh, Pastor Carter as, he, as you give him the, the knowledge and wisdom to give us your word today. And, Lord, we just we just want to give you all the praise and glory for everything that you do and providing all of our needs and, you know, our family and friends. And, again, the, you know, Pastor Paul, you know, bless them and <clears throat> just just bless everybody today and every day come that comes afterwards. And, we're look, and we look forward to seeing you in the second coming of Christ. And, Lord, we just want to say we just we love you, we glorify you, and praise you in everything that you do. And we love you in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. Amen, amen, and we love you too, Brian, and we thank God for you. Praise God, we thank God for each of you. It, you know, it means a lot to me to uh, be able to come on on Sunday mornings and to look into the, the uh, window and see uh, some of you who are regular, who make it a purpose to be here, and that we worship together. This is worship, ladies and gentlemen. This is worship, and I appreciate you. I appreciate you taking the time out, Christy Carpenter. I appreciate you and Aaron and, and the kids for taking time out to being with us. And Terry and each and every one of Jackie Fisher. Uh, and and I, I appreciate those of you who uh, take the time out each week. You look for the uh, recording. Uh, those of you who visit us via YouTube or uh, those of you who get these recordings as uh, attachments to your emails. And we pray that these messages will bless you. Our whole purpose is to present Jesus Christ to a dying world and, and encourage those who believe in the Lord and to seek uh, to save those who are lost. And so as we do this together, you encourage my heart, every one of you. When I see you online, you encourage my heart. And you encourage my heart when I see you behind the scenes praying for me praying for Jackie, praying for this ministry. We bless God. By the way, pray for Jackie. Uh, she's going, she and her sister are traveling to Europe, leaving tomorrow, and they're going to be in Europe for eight days, going to be visiting uh, uh, England and France, and uh, she deserves a break. She deserves a, a vacation. So pray much for Jackie and her sister. Uh, that God give them travel and grace and keep them healthy and strong. Bless the places where they will stay and sleep, the foods they eat, the transportation they will uh, use, and the people they meet, and bring them back safely. Uh, praise God. It's so good that she can take this vacation. And praise God. I'm looking forward to this time also. Praise God. Uh, I can cook. Hey, Jackie Fisher, I can cook. I can burn in, in the pots now. I can cook, so I'll be all right. Uh, God will take good care of me. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I want to spend the next two weeks in a, an area that has been so divisive in the church. And that's this question, can a Christian lose their salvation? I'm going to spend two weeks uh, in ministering on the subject, can a Christian lose their salvation? And I sought the Lord on this, and God has given me uh, messages to give to you, information to give to you, along with Scripture. And we're going to be ministering 
this week part one on can a Christian lose their salvation and then next week part two if we have to go to part three we will go to part three right now I visualize two weeks in this subject I'm going to give you four major points today uh, in the position that God has given us on this subject I will give you four major points also I will give you a host of scriptures to uh, justify what God is saying to us and so I pray that that you will listen carefully take notes or if you want a hard copy uh, send me an email I'll send you a hard copy of this information but listen carefully and teach your family and teach your friends even teach your enemies so they can position themselves for the second coming of Jesus Christ and so uh, Ryan has prayed for us and I thank God for Ryan's powerful prayer I thank God for the presence of the Holy Spirit I thank God for you and so for the next whole 30 minutes let's give God our undivided attention as we look at this subject can a Christian lose their salvation and Father God we thank you again for uh, this anointing you have placed on this ministry that we can preach your word and and that this word will go forth and it will not return unto you void and God we pray for a mighty harvest all over the world we pray that you'll strengthen your people bless them keep them healthy and strong and Lord keep us on the wall help us to be steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as we know that our labor is not in vain in the Lord ladies and gentlemen my brothers and sisters the church is divided on this issue you've got a lot of people a lot of people who preach once saved always saved and I, I've got a lot of pastor friends I'm not gonna call uh, names of any of them but I have a lot of pastor friends they preach hey once saved always saved my position is the, I, the opposite I do not believe that I do not believe the once saved always say because you know what happens when you take that position once saved always say then then and pastors and and brothers and sisters when you take that position oh you want to say it always say that gives a green light for Satan to oppress and for Satan to use members of the body of Christ in any way he wants to and the shame of the whole situation is that many believers fall for the okie doke and they they you know well here's how Christians are or here's, here's how people are they pick and choose their preachers they pick and choose who they're gonna to listen to if they know that a preacher takes a stand against uh, apostasy and, and takes a stand well if a preacher says uh, I don't believe once saved always saved that then, then believers are not going to listen some believers are not going to listen to that preacher I want to be discerning I want you to be discerning I want you not to pick and choose your preachers but I want you to hear the voice of God it is better to know the Word of God than to put your trust in a preacher or to put yourself trust in a preacher the Bible teaches us to flee uh, to um, flee idolatry flee from it run from it and so many members of the body of Christ have chosen their preachers they won't let anybody else preach to them they don't care what who that person is they're not going to accept what that person says and many Christians listen listen to this ladies and gentlemen many Christians are messed up goofed up today because they have they they have idols they're following idols they have made idols out of their pastors they have made idols out of them and many pastors have made idols out of themselves and uh, and people believe everything that comes out of their mouths ladies and gentlemen I'm afraid of this thing called idolatry I'm afraid of, of, of having an idol in my life I cast down every idol I don't even want myself to be an idol you know we can pump ourselves up and push ourselves to the place where we think we're the best thing ever happened happened to Christianity but God wants us to be humble the Bible says humble yourself beneath the mighty hand of God and so I, I caution you don't make idols out of these pastors don't make idols out of these prophets a lot of these people 
uh, bringing forth this so-called prophecy. I mean, a lot of what we see as so-called prophecy in, 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 in the way, hey, Terry, Jeep girl, a lot of what we see as so-called prophecy today is nothing but telling the news, repeating the news. Look, I can go on CNN. I can go on ABC, CBS, uh, ABC, and get the news. A lot of people, because they, they can give somebody information about an earthquake in Venezuela or an earthquake in Hawaii, they think they're prophets. Ladies and gentlemen, that's just telling the news. There's more to prophecy. And, and those of you who are members of our Paul Begley School of Prophecy, you're learning what prophecy really is. You're learning what a prophet really is. You're learning that a prophet is like Habakkuk. You go before the Lord. You take a position. I'm going to stand on my guard post. I'm going to station myself at the rampart. I'm going to watch and see what the Lord will say to me. And a lot of these so-called prophets are repeating stuff. They're getting off the news or off their, from their news sources or their news channels. I know I might be stepping on some toes, but I'm telling it like it is. A true prophet is one who's going to go before the Lord, humble himself or herself before the Lord, and Ask the Lord, Lord, what is it on your heart that you would like to reveal to me? And then hear what God gives or see the vision that God gives and then write the vision. Write it down. Write it down so there's no, no mistake about it. And then run with it. Those who will read it will run with it or those who hear it will run with it. What we have today, we've got a lot of newscasters. They get their information from certain news sources, and they give it out to the people, and much of it is fake news. And, and, and it's a shame the number of so-called prophets and preachers in this world today, especially in the United States, especially those who are politically aligned. There are prophets in the Republicans' uh, pockets. There are, there are prophets in the Democratic prophets, and there are Democratic prophets and pockets, I mean, there are Democratic prophets and the Republican prophets, and there are people who have sold their souls to their, their political party. But a true prophet, ladies and gentlemen, listen to this, a true prophet will humble himself or herself, fast and pray, seek the face of the Lord, and, and go to God uh, and confess their sins, go to God with a pure heart, with a clean heart and have a teachable spirit and say, Lord, what is it that you want to say to me? And then hear what God says, internalize it or write it down. And then when God releases it, when God says, give this to the people, then you give it to the people. But what we have today, we've got so many so-called prophets giving so much stuff that people are hearing all kinds of voices and these voices are goofing people up, causing such division, even in the body of Christ, because, because of the, the, uh, the, the, the way in which people are, are making a mockery of God, calling themselves prophets. And all they're doing is broadcasting news events and this sort of thing. Prophecy is hearing from God. What is God saying? What is God saying? And then you support it with Scripture. You support it with Scripture. Prophecy and scripture must agree, ladies and gentlemen. There's a marriage between the prophetic word and scripture. There's a marriage between the rhema word and, and the logos. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I want to caution you. I want to caution you. Don't make idols out of these so-called leaders you're following. Don't make an idol because when they fall, then what, what do you have to grab onto? And that is why there's so much division in the church so much falling away because when these false prophets fall, then the people have no leg to stand on. And I say, don't make a person your idol. I know I'm preaching, and I'm preaching something that's good for all of us. Don't make any preacher or any prophet your idol. Stand on the word of God. God said, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Stand on that, ladies and gentlemen. Be cautious. Stay awoke. I caution you, stay awoke. And a lot of people don't want to hear this. They're preachers. I mean, they want people to follow them. I mean, they, they, they want to have thousands of likes on Facebook. They want to have a great following. I don't need a great following. All I want to do is be able to preach some, to somebody who will listen and hear what thus saith the Lord. Because I go before the Lord, 
and I stay before the Lord. I seek his face for the word that he has for us. But there are so many people who don't want the word of God. They want to call to themselves, surround themselves, or sit under preachers having itching ears. They want someone to tickle their inner ear, tickle their innards, give them something sweet, something that's going to uh, 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 just take the, take the, the, take the, the, the top off of off, off the foam, off of uh, the, the beverage they're drinking, and just uh, enable them to keep on doing what they're doing. But a true man or woman of God will go before the Lord, and before they even speak a word, before they even give anything to, to God's people, they have sought the Lord. God, is this what you want me to say? God, will you back me up? Will you back me up with Scripture? God, will you give this to me, and I'll give it to them. And no matter how the people respond to it, the true man or woman of God, whether you call them a prophet, a preacher, a pastor, a teacher, or whatever, whatever you call them, they're going to hear from God, and they're going to give to the people what thus saith the Lord, and they will give it unapologetically, ladies and gentlemen. I preach the word, and, and uh, as Anonymous on here knows, talking about my son, he knows, hey, his dad does not apologize to anybody. I'm going to say what thus saith the Lord, and let the chips fall where they may. And Wes knows we've been through a lot of persecution. We were persecuted when he was a little boy. He's known a life of persecution because people hate this message that we preach. This message of God is, is not a, an icing on the cake message. It's not a stroke uh, uh, and stroke me and soothe, soothe me message. This message is, is, is like a, quick, a, a, a sharp edged sword. Uh, it cuts two ways. It divides even the, the bone and the marrow, the soul and the spirit, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the hearts. So, ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you to, to make sure that you're following someone who's preaching the word of God. Don't get caught up because someone is popular. Don't get caught up in this new wave thing or this new age thing, but stick with the gospel. If somebody's preaching the gospel, you ought to stick with that person. And most of all, most of all, most of all, many of my listeners are mature now. You're grown up. It's time for you to read the Bible for yourselves. It's time. I look at Facebook and I see all this, this, all, all this garbage, all this crap on Facebook. I see a, a lot of so-called prophets. They call themselves prophets because they, they predicted an earthquake or they predicted a tsunami. No, they didn't. They got this off a news source, and they were the first to put it on, new, on Facebook for, before somebody else, and, and, and they want people to think they, they have a prophetic call on their life. It's sickening. It's sickening. It makes me sick, and I know it must make God sick. God is looking for someone who's going to come before him. And, and uh, the scripture says, And I sought for a man among them who will stand in the gap before me and make up the hedge that I would not destroy the land. And I found uh, God's eyes, the scripture says in Second Chronicles, uh, 1 Chronicles 6, 16, 9, uh, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to prove himself strong on behalf of them whose hearts are perfect toward him. So God is looking for somebody whose heart is toward him, uh, whose heart is toward God. Seek God. Get your information from God. If you're not sure of the information you have, ask God about it. All of this, ladies and gentlemen, is a, a powerful introduction to this subject that I'm going to be ministering on in the next two weeks. You might have to go three weeks now, but in the next week, few weeks, we're going to look at this subject, Can a Christian lose their salvation. And we're not going to look at it uh, basically from man's perspective because there's a divided camp in the Christian church. There's a divided camp. There are many people who say, no, a Christian once saved, always saved. How can you lose your salvation? Then there's a camp that says, oh, yes, you can lose your salvation. But I want to know what does God say, and I'm going to present to you. I'm going to present to you both sides of the argument, but then I'm going to present to you the word of God. Ryan, we're going to hear what 
God says about this. And then each of you can read. And those of you listening to the recording, you need to. You owe yourself. You are responsible to seek God on this matter. You are responsible, just like Habakkuk, uh, to stand on your guard post, to stay alert, to stay woke. And any question, ladies and gentlemen, any question you have as a believer, you can go to God for yourself. You don't have to depend on a prophet or a so-called prophet or a pastor or a bishop or a teacher. You don't need to get their opinion, ladies and gentlemen. God wants to fellowship with you like he walked in the cool of the garden with Adam uh, and 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 uh, when he when he created Adam, God walked in the cool of the evening with Adam, and they talked together, uh, 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 eyeball to eyeball. They and they listened to one another. God wants that same kind of fellowship. That's the fellowship that Satan stole from mankind and broke that relationship between mankind and God. But you can restore that. Jesus paid the price on the cross. He died so that we can be reconciled with God, and God is looking to have a personal relationship with you. And so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I bind that spirit of laziness in the church. I bind that slovenly spirit in the church. I bind that spirit in the church that depends on preachers and teachers and, 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 and so-called friends uh, to interpret for us. Ladies and gentlemen, we are ought to seek God for ourselves. That is why Jesus died on the cross, so that everybody might have a right to the tree of life. Everybody can have a right to the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And so learn, ladies and gentlemen, teach your family, teach your neighbors, teach your friends, teach your church members. Teach them to seek God for themselves. And that, that just blows away that laziness, that dependency. That just, just blows away that uh, idolatry thing where we have idols out of certain teachers and certain preachers and everything they say, everything coming down the pike, they're going to give it to you and, and, and you believe it. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get real because these are the last days and, 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 and these are the days that are going to make or break Christians. And so God wants us to be alert, to stay awoke, awoke uh, to, to be uh, vigilant, and to endure until the end. So for the next couple of weeks, we're going to look at uh, this issue. Can a Christian lose their salvation? And I'm going to, I'm going to load you down with some scriptures. Um, uh, I've got a lot of scriptures that give us uh, God's position on this. I'm not going to give you my position or John Jones's position or Bishop so-and-so's position. I want to give you God's position because it's only what the Word of God says that's going to make the difference in our lives. We live in a culture that believes that everybody will be saved. That's our culture. Uh, our culture teaches us that we are justified by death, and all you need to do to go to heaven is die. We live in a culture, ladies and gentlemen, that teaches us you're born, you live your life, eat, drink, and marry, be merry, and die, and you go to heaven. There are millions of people in this nation and in the nations of the world who believe they're going, they're going to go to heaven. Millions of people in this world believe in their various religions, whether it's Christianity, Judaism, uh, 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 Mohammedanism or Islam, or uh, the uh, Hindu religion or the Sikh religion. They believe that uh, people, after they leave this life, they're going to a place called heaven or nirvana or 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 karma, or whatever. But the Bible does not teach that. The Bible uh, teaches us differently. Okay? Theologically speaking, we live in a culture that has embraced the concept of apostasy. 
Apostasy means a falling away from God or to stand away from. The literal translation of the Greek word apostasy means to stand away from. Or in other words, an apostate is one who stands away from God, who has fallen away from God, one who is determined to take a position to stand apart from God. And we're living in an age of apostasy. There's great apostasy today, a great falling away from Christianity. And a lot of people in, in, in this world today uh, put the blame. They point the finger to the millenniums. It is not the millenniums uh, who uh, are falling away. Uh, the millenniums are the products of our generation. And uh, uh, the millenniums are, are the grandchildren and the children of our generation. So our generation let the ball fall. Our generation, uh, I'm talking about the old folks like me, have, have, have let the ball fall and have not uh, uh, taught posterity the right word of God, the true word of God. We put up with so much in the 80s and the 90s and, and the 2000s, and we let uh, blink their eyes and turn our backs against God, and many of us went our own way and lived our own way, did whatever we wanted to do, and, and some of us uh, in our old age have come to our senses that we need Jesus, but most of our generation, ladies and gentlemen, have not had a revelation of Jesus and have not humbled themselves and turned to Jesus, and so as a result, they point the finger to this young generation, this young generation, this new wave generation uh, uh, who don't know Jesus. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, when you point the finger, the finger has on the opposite end a thumb, and the thumb is pointing back to us. And so I want to challenge you. It's getting late in, the, in, in life. I, I'm, I'm getting reports of, of classmates and friends of mine. Every week somebody's dying. People are leaving here, ladies and gentlemen, and many are leaving in an unsafe condition. And the sad thing is, ladies and gentlemen, many of these people have been going to church all their lives, yet they have not been born again. Listen to this. Many of the people I know, many of them who are dying, have been going to a church all their lives. They started off going to Sunday school. They're church goers. They know how to go to church, or they knew how to go to church. They knew how to do church. But many do not have a personal relationship with Jesus. And, and, and ladies and gentlemen, I cannot tell you the number of times I've been attacked by even family members and old friends and, 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 and people I've known since we, I was in first grade. Uh, it's all right. It's all right to talk about growing up and the games we played together and sports we played together, but they don't want to talk about Jesus, yet they attend church every Sunday. And the bottom line is many of them do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, yet they call themselves Christians, and in our culture, they are labeled as Christians. In our culture, Anyone who attends church is a Christian. But in God's culture, there's a whole different story. Jesus said to Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to preach this and preach this and preach this and preach this until God calls us home that you must be born again. And, and I pray that people will hear this word and receive it and believe it and realize that being a member of the church cannot save you. Being baptized cannot save you. Many people have been so erroneously taught, and they have chosen these idols. They practice idolatry. They keep going back to those places where they tell you, just join the church, get baptized, and you'll go to heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not true. You cannot join the church and go to heaven. You cannot get baptized and go to heaven. It is not true. Jesus said you must be born again. And so I, I encourage you, believe what Jesus says. Believe every word of God. Believe the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. Even when you read the word of God, if you don't understand it fully, you can be like Habakkuk. Stand on your guard posts. 
Station yourself at the rampart and watch and see what he will say to you when he reproves you. Ask God, Lord, what is uh, the understanding of this word? If you're reading scripture and you don't understand, don't run to pastor so-and-so or prophet so-and-so and and get their take on it because pastor so-and-so and and prophet so-and-so may not know. They may not be right with God. They may not even have a relationship with God. Ladies and gentlemen, God wants to fellowship with you on a personal level. That's why he sent Jesus to the cross. Can a Christian lose their salvation? Let's look at what the the word of God says as Paul writes in 1 Timothy chapter 1, 18 through 20. And in the next uh, couple weeks, I'm going to give you loads of scriptures. Paul wrote, to Timothy. This charge I entrust to you, Timothy, my child, in accordance with the prophecies previously made about you, that by them ye may wage the good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience. By rejecting this, some have made shipwreck of their faith, among whom are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan that they may learn not to blaspheme. Paul encourages Timothy to hold on to the faith. Don't become shipwrecked like Hymenaeus and Alexander. Hymenaeus and Alexander were two well-known preachers, ladies and gentlemen, pastors, prophets. They were contemporaries of Paul. They were well-known in their areas, yet they were false teachers. They got away from the word of God. They ceased teaching the word of God. They began teaching their own beliefs. They became enemies of the gospel. They threw the gospel out. They threw the word of God out of their ministry. Yet they had many people following them. They had a lot of Facebook followers. They got a bunch of likes. But they were leading the people to hell. And Paul had them excommunicated from the church. He had to kick them out. He probably had ordained them. Then he had unordained them. And that has to happen sometimes. Because they got away from teaching the word of God. And they began teaching their own ideas. And ladies and gentlemen, we're living in a culture where men and women, many famous popular people, are preaching their own ideas rather than preaching the word of God. I choose, ladies and gentlemen, to preach the word of God. Paul warns Timothy to keep the faith and to keep a good conscience. And he reminds Timothy of those who did not, Hymenaeus and Alexander. There's no question that professing believers can fall and fall radically. Can a Christian lose his salvation? Whereas the majority of people in the church say, oh, once saved, always saved. Because God is a God of mercy and grace. Once he saves you, he'll keep you. But ladies and gentlemen, the scripture do not teach us this. The scripture teaches us that we have a responsibility to keep that which God has entrusted into us and to hold on to that and not fall from it. The Bible teaches us one of the scriptures I'll be giving you Uh, A little later on in this series, the word of God says, any man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Anyone who starts off with Jesus and turns away from him and does not repent, the Bible says that person is not even fit for the kingdom of God. Jesus himself tells us in the word, He says, there are many who will come to him and say, Lord, Lord, did I not preach in your name? Did I not build churches in your name? Did I not start hospitals in your name? Did I not feed the hungry? Did I not provide jobs for the people? Did I not give to worthy causes? And Jesus is going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're at a very critical stage in Christianity and God wants us to know that he will keep us. He will keep us. But God cannot keep us, ladies and gentlemen, if we choose to turn from him. If we deliberately, like Hymenaeus and Jonathan, uh, like 
Hymenaeus and Alexander deliberately turn from the living God. Ladies and gentlemen, there are many passages of scriptures where people sin and turn from God. We, you and I have sinned and turned from God from time to time. But ladies and gentlemen, it's all about repentance, repentance, repentance. When you know that you've gone astray, be quick to repent. Be quick to call upon the name of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, turn to God, return to God. David found that out when he uh, committed adultery and had the, the, the husband uh, killed. On the battlefield, when David realized he had sinned, he cried unto the Lord, and he repented, and he turned from it. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible warns us. It warns us about persisting in sins. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, I know many people. I know women who are married to women. I know some preachers who call themselves preachers, and I, I personally know some women preachers who are married to women. Ladies and gentlemen, that is an apostasy. That is an abomination. Yet they will argue with me. Now, some of them don't even listen, don't even uh, uh, want to come on a church like this. They don't want to hear this because they surround themselves with like-minded people. They go to fellowships where lesbians uh, gather together or, or the men go to fellowships where homosexuals gather together and they will fight you nail and to nail toe to toe. They will even kill you because of what they believe. Ladies and gentlemen, I know men who are married to men. I know men. I went to school with some of them. I know some of them. They have cho chosen to marry a man. They are having sex with a man. According to Romans chapter 1, this is an abomination. It is atrocious in God's sight. Yet, ladies and gentlemen, I know personally people who Go to church every Sunday. They sit up in church, that man and his, his, his wife who's a man, or that woman and her husband who's a man, and they sit up. Many are in pulpits, ladies and gentlemen, and they look holy, and they are surrounded. Ladies and gentlemen, they've got more people in their church than we have uh, attending this ministry on Sundays, and they think they're right, and they will fight you, ladies and gentlemen, but it is not my fight. The sad thing is, that they're going to have to meet God and give an account. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin continue any longer in it? Ladies and gentlemen, when you're saved, that means you're saved from sin. Why go back to those sins? Why entertain the old man and his desires? Why do those things that God considers an abomination. Why do those things? Ladies and gentlemen, I, I've known of people who have laid down, women who have laid down with dogs. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I know one woman, she laid down with a dog, and the drug dealers made her lay down and have sex with a dog so that she could have get her drugs for free. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this is an abomination. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an abomination to continue to dwell in this type of activity. And ladies and gentlemen, if Jesus comes and you're still in bed, you're a man sleeping with a man, uh, and, 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 and you're justifying, well, I go to church, I'm the pastor, so and this first lady is my first lady. That the man is my first lady. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> there be no excuse. The Bible says, there thou art inexcus inexcusable, O man. So we know how to gather like-minded people around us to support the abominable things we're doing. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, alcohol is a destroyer. Why continue to drink? When you know God says, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. But the drinker says, but the Bible also says, a little wine for your stomach's sake. Yes, a little wine, not a whole fifth of liquor. Ladies and gentlemen, Christians know how to pick and choose portions of the Bible to support their abominable acts. And, 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 and you and I, we can preach the word of God, and what they do, they say, you're judging me. You're condemning me. No, no, no. I'm a preacher. I preach the word of God. And, and people hate the preacher. People hate the mailman. Ladies and gentlemen, they will hate you. 
But I stand on the word of God. And I beg you, stop the sin. Stop making excuses. Turn to the Lord. Turn to the word of God. Humble yourself. God said, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. Ladies and gentlemen, there are actually eight things that I want to talk about in the next couple of weeks, and it might be three weeks now. I want to talk about a falling away. There's a great falling away. We'll pick that up next week. I want to talk about sinning willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth. What happens when you willfully sin after you receive the knowledge of the truth? I want to talk about becoming entangled again with the pollutions of the world. What happens when a Christian who's born again, washed in the blood of Jesus, deliberately chooses to become entangled again in the pollutions of the world? I want to talk about specific sins that can keep you out of heaven. There are specific sins that can keep you out of heaven. I want to talk about not everyone who calls Jesus Lord, Lord, will make it into heaven. I want to talk about uh, a sin leading to death. There is a sin that leads to death, and, 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 and many Christians are committing it. I want to talk about falling from grace. What happens when a person has fallen from grace? What, uh, what will happen to you if you've fallen from grace? And Jesus comes back. And then I want, to, I want to talk about having your name blotted out from the book of life. Having your name blotted out from the book of life. There are so many people say, once saved, always saved. But Jesus says in Revelation 3, 5, your name can be blotted out from the book of life. And if your name is not found written in the book, you're not going to get into heaven. And so we want to look at these things. We want to look at these things. I know my time is about out, but I want to just share. Uh, there, I have a plethora. Uh, that's one of the big words, few big words I know. I know It means a whole lot. There are a whole lot of scriptures I have that warn us about falling away from God, about deliberately choosing to fall away from God. And there is no salvation. There is no restoration. If you deliberately choose to fall away from God and to walk away from God, the word apostasy is translated from the Greek, meaning to stand apart from God. If you deliberately choose, if you deliberately choose to be apostate, to stand away from God, there is no salvation. So we're going to work with this in the next few weeks, and we're going to see what God has to say. And we're going to pray, we're going to believe God that the Holy Spirit is going to convict hearts and that God through his great love will restore people, that people who have turned from him will repent and call upon the name of the Lord and that no soul be lost. I want to uh, believe that those of you who are listening uh, to the, the, the uh, recording will continue and get the recordings. Go to my YouTube channel. In fact, every one of you listening, you can get these uh, YouTube videos sent to you every week. If you will go to my YouTube channel, YouTube, Leroy Carter, go to YouTube and subscribe to that channel. If you subscribe to this channel, you will get every video that we make, every one that we produce. You will get this automatically. So go on there and subscribe. In fact, I need uh, uh, four subscribers today who are subscribed to my YouTube channel so that I can shorten the name uh, of my YouTube channel and make it easier for people to remember. Praise God. Well, uh, the time, my time's about up, and I've laid the foundation for our series. And uh, I guess we're just going to work with this series until the Lord says, okay, you have exhausted it, let it go. And so I pray in the name of Jesus that whoever you are, that you'll hold on to Jesus, cling to Jesus with all your heart. That you love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Don't let anything separate you from the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't let people separate you. Don't let money separate you. Don't, you let, don't let anything this world offers you 
pull you away from God. Many people have become apostate. Many have let the cares of this world and the, the desires and the lusts of this world to pull them away from Jesus. But as for me and my house, we choose to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. We choose to stick with Jesus because I know it was the Lord Jesus Christ who reached down real low and picked me up out of the muck and the mire and the clay and, and, and the, 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 uh, the, the vomit of this life and set my feet on, solid, on the solid rock of Jesus and gave me the gift of salvation. He blew his life into me, his breath into me. And I've been born again by the Spirit of God. And so have you. And so we ask that you, we encourage you, we admonish you, stick with Jesus. Don't let anything separate you from the love of Christ. Then I appeal to those of you who are not saved, ask the Lord Jesus Christ to save you today and receive the gift of salvation by faith. Then I appeal to those of you who have backslidden, and, 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 and are in a place where you, you, you can't get out of that situation. Repent of it. Repent of it. Tell the Lord you repent of it. Tell the Lord you hate that situation. Ask the Lord to deliver you. Ask the Lord to deliver you. The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And let me just say to you, no, it is not too late for you. If you hear my voice today, if you hear this word, the Bible says this day, if you hear my voice, harden not your hearts as your fathers did, fathers did in the provocation. This day, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Call upon the name of the Lord. God will deliver you. And then when he delivers you, you stay with the Lord. You get into a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church, and you get your Bible. You start reading it for yourself and worship the Lord with all your heart. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. Ask God to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. You need to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. The church needs to be filled with the Holy Spirit. He is the one who keeps us. Praise God. Stop running from the baptism of the Holy Ghost and run to it. Ask God to fill you with the Holy Ghost. He's the only one who can keep us. Father God, I thank you for this message today. I thank you for your love for the people and for all mankind. Oh, God, forgive us of our sins. Forgive us. Heal us of our backsliding. Oh, God, rebuke the spirit of apostasy. Oh, God, stop the falling away. Open the eyes and the hearts of the people. Let them know that you love them. Help the people to return to you. Help them to turn their hearts to you. And we praise you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you hung, bled, and died on the cross so that each of us can have eternal life. Lord God, I thank you that your word says you're not willing that any should perish, that should all, that all, but all should come to repentance. Guide us, we pray, and we trust you, Lord God, at your word. Bless each and every one in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We bind the enemy, Satan. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I command that you not steal this word from the hearts of the people. In Jesus' name, we praise you, Lord, and honor you. Amen. 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 Well, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. I felt a powerful anointing, Jackie Fisher, in this message today. A powerful anointing in this message. Uh, praise God. Christy Carpenter, I felt the powerful presence of the Lord as we presented this message today. Karen, I felt the presence of the Lord, and I know you felt the presence of the Lord all the way up in Pennsylvania. Jeep, I know you felt the presence of the Lord in Colorado. And so many of you uh, who are listening, uh, are listening to the, the recording, you're sensing the presence of the Lord. God wants to change your life. God wants to guarantee you eternal life. Praise God. God does not want you to lose your salvation. Jesus did not die on the cross for you to lose what he earned for you, what he gave his life for. Praise God. Well, we're going to end the recording, and we're going to open up the, the uh, line so that anyone who wants to share uh, uh, or their comments or ask any questions or just fellowship one, with one another can do so. Those of you who are 
uh, have listened to the recording, you can contact with, with me. You, you can contact me on my, uh, via the YouTube or via Facebook or the email, or you can text me at 404-205-1101.